And we're back in the studio of Romatske with uh, news from Odessa. Governor Mikhail Saakashvili has presented a uh, new deputy of the governor, a uh, well-known Russian opposition politician activist, Maria Gaidar. Uh, Maria, who has been working with Boris Nemtsov, Alexei Navalny, has also closely experienced working in Russian state system. In 2009, 2011, she's been working as a deputy governor of Kirov Oblast. Maria comes from a family of reformers. She's a daughter of uh, Igor Gaidar, well-known Russian economist, politician, the author of Russian early economic reforms known as shock therapy. Um, right after the collapse of the Soviet Union. So, Maria, we, we're having Maria right now in our studio. Maria, thank you so much for joining us tonight. So, um, thank you. Good evening. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it official? What's your status right now? Yeah, we were just discussing this. Uh, I am a nominee. Uh, there is some procedure. I have to be confer confirmed by the president. So uh, we're waiting for that. And you, do you also need to receive Ukrainian citizenship? Yes, yes, yes. that's also procedure. It's, it's, it doesn't have to last for long, to take a long time, but uh, it will take some time. And, and yeah. that's yeah. maybe one of the difficult questions off the back. I mean, under Ukrainian citizenship law, you're only allowed to have a single citizenship. So are you prepared to give up your Russian citizenship, or have you thought about how that would work? I'll, I'll ask, I'll go and, uh, and ask if uh, what they say, the officials, I'll do. But uh, I, um, I know that according to the law, it's like two years of transition period where you can uh, so you'd wait and yeah. see. But I mean, for some Ukrainians, they might, I mean, they might be concerned that see, you know, a Russian who's coming in for a position and hear that sort of answer to question, I'll wait and see whether or not I'm going to stay, whether or not I'll take the citizenship. I mean, what's, what's your investment in Ukraine right now? What's, play, paint no, the I'm, path. I, I, huge investment. It's the project of my life now, but, mm -hmm. uh, um, and I'll do, I'll do what is required, but mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, uh, I have uh, Russia family, I have property, I have uh, different uh, circumstances which also are uh, go with, together with citizenship. Well, and paint a picture for us, because our, our audience is mainly international. How does it happen that an you know, opposition figure in Russia, you know, becomes an official or is in the process of becoming an official in Ukraine, in Odessa? How did this come to be? I don't, I don't think any problem if you uh, followed the job of Mikhail Saakashvili. Uh, he had uh, people with different uh, backgrounds and different citizenship in his government. So what he's trying to create is an efficient team, and he has um, nationality, ethnicity, whatever religion, doesn't matter. Effect effectiveness is the only factor. So um, at the same time, I never that uh, the regime I always was in opposition, even when I was the only one to be in the opposition uh, in Russia since uh, 2005. Uh, and uh, I uh, worked and always had the, uh, always, uh, always was focused on social, uh, social issues. And so there is a huge, huge problem in Odessa. There uh, internally displaced people, a lot of them, and uh, unfortunately not enough has been done yet, so, so yeah, there is yeah, we'll, need to we'll fix get this, to yeah, mm -hmm. this we'll problem quite uh, quite fast and effectively. Yeah, we'll get to Odessa, mm -hmm. but the, the interesting question right now is that uh, from what you're saying, uh, you don't want to break any links with Russia and probably you're, you're planning on getting back there, but from the reaction even from Russia right now, your appointment or your nomination is pretty harsh. Uh, how do you see that? I mean, how do you see your future here in Ukraine and after you work here, probably in Russia? Uh, Russia is going to change. Russia now is not a democracy. And so one day Russia is definitely going to become a democracy and it's going to be a completely different situation. Uh, completely. Probably we're going to have Ukrainians going to work to Russia and we're going to have the same discussions uh, uh, like now over there, which I hope. Uh, I always wanted uh, Russian government to be formed on the uh, basis of meritocracy, not on the basis of political loyalty to a very specific, uh, uh, specific clan that is now at power. But uh, um, I, uh, I think that everything depends on uh, what I'm going to be able to achieve. 
Well, and that's I, a question off of that. You know, with a lot of these foreigners coming to Russia, there have been a lot of, you know, more liberal Russians, opposition Russians who've moved to Ukraine. Not as many working for the government, but some. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious what Ukraine is for you, because I've seen some of your other interviews where you spoke about this brotherhood between mm -hmm. Ukrainian and mm -hmm. Russian people. Mm -hmm. But to many of our viewers, I mean, that's something that's really been poisoned by yeah. Putin propaganda. That means Russia leading the way. That means Ukrainians yeah, yeah. being subjected. Understand. I was talking to Russian audience, and I was saying that this is hypocritical critical to say to, to speak so much about the brotherhood because in Russia people speak a lot about the brotherhood and criticize so harsh a person who want to, wants to work in Ukraine uh, at the same time I uh, don't think there is uh, uh, I don't think we have to talk about brotherhood you know first of all uh, Russia needs to end the war then we have to become neighbors after that good neighbors then partners, and then probably members of European Union together. That's bring us to the, our question from one of our, um, sorry, from one of our viewers. Uh, I don't have it right now here, but the question is, uh, is there a war? Yes, definitely there is a war. The journalist said, I just didn't, I have to, had to go, and I told her that I have to go. Definitely there is a war. And, and who is the war with? Because this was the war big yeah, just to make Yeah, there is a war, and uh, there is a war with Russia. This, this is a fact. This is absolutely clear. There is no doubt for me whatsoever. And uh, uh, I just, uh, I, I, I mean, that, that, that's absolutely clear for me. And that was uh, uh, this, and I'm many, in, not in many probably, but in interviews in Russia, I, uh, I shared my position. I told that this is war is illegal, it's immoral, uh, that uh, Russia was an aggressor, and I never changed this position. And I mean, just for our viewers to explain why we're asking this, this was a big topic in Ukrainian media over the weekend. You know, they showed a brief clip where you were with you, or I guess where you were walking no, away. But, uh, there, is a, there was a journalist, and she she was following me, and she 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 did some questions and answered to some questions. And then I had to go, and she continued, uh, continued to repeat, uh, repeat the question. I said, "Sorry, I have to go," and she continued to repeat. And then she just yeah, it left, like you, you left. Yeah. It, it looks like I don't want to respond to this question, yeah, but it it's did. not, it's it not the case. I uh, do want, and I'm ready to respond to this question. And I don't think that there is even a need to respond to this, uh, uh, to this question because this is a factual thing. You know, for me, this is a factual thing. There is no mm -hmm. question about that. Probably there is question about that for people who are brainwashed by Russian propaganda, but there is uh, a fact for me. And I think it, this should be a fact for anyone who has eyes, who has, uh, uh, who has eyes, who has uh, the, the way to analyze uh, information and the way to find uh, uh, information from different sources, not just mm -hmm. from Russian state uh, TV, Russian state propaganda. Well, you're getting back to Ukraine, to your work uh, in, in in Odessa. In your opinion, where Ukraine is is headed as a country, as a nation, uh, where its place in the world? How do you see? In European it? Union, definitely. I want Ukraine to be in European Union. I want uh, Ukraine to be an independent, uh, uh, prosperous, uh, open, democratic country. I think there is a long way to go. And, uh, but I think this is very important for Ukraine, and it's going to uh, have a great impact on the region as a whole and even on Russia. But the most important thing for Ukraine is to succeed on this way, to show that this way is possible. Uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a very huge mental change for a lot of people in the region if uh, uh, Ukraine do this if success, they can show uh, it, success, it's possible. can show that's possible. And if we look at, you know, specifically you and we look at, at Odessa, what would your priorities be? I mean, do you know what you would focus on or uh, what you would want yes, to? Yes, it's, uh, it's a social brand. Uh, mm -hmm. all, all like whole uh, bunch of uh, social issues. The press, uh, the most pressing is the internal displaced people. It's uh, more than a thousand people with disabilities. Uh, uh, they were received, but temporary. You know, they're staying without any uh, clear vision of their future. You know, how they're going to live, where, uh, mm -hmm. how the uh, uh, state is going mm -hmm. to help them. So it's very pressing. It's very urgent, and uh, this uh, this issue should be addressed. And I want to address uh, this issue. And uh, there is a whole, whole, huge, uh, huge, um, huge amount of problems. Not uh, uh, in healthcare, uh, education, the whole system. But uh, first of all, it's uh, uh, internal displaced people and uh, uh, putting up the system 
to, mm -hmm. uh, to work effectively mm -hmm. as an administration to uh, fight corruption mm -hmm. and to bring transparency and to bring uh, all the possible international help and the help of NGO and to make this help and their work effective. Well, so what can be done with IDPs that can't, that isn't being done now? We're going to, no, a lot of people are just uh, placed uh, in some temporary in uh, sanatorius. Uh, it's like uh, something like hotel and healthcare facilities. Uh, they're, they're placed there, it's temporary. Uh, they, uh, some of them receive some compensation for, uh, for food, some of them not. Mm -hmm. Some of them are people with disabilities, they need special, uh, special care. So these people need a place to live. You know, mm -hmm. these people need uh, somebody to take care of people who are di uh, with disabilities and they need, uh, we need to help people uh, who want to find a job. Mm -hmm. you know, and want to work. Mm -hmm. So there should be a clear vision, you know, what to do. Now there's no clear vision. You know, there are promises that are made, were made by politicians mm -hmm. many, many times, but it was just, you know, just to put aside the problem, you know, to within silence the it for, uh, for a the while. the government, you mean, aware there is no clear yeah, vision? There, yeah, and it is a, for, 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 for a year, people were just placed in these temporary sanatoriums mm -hmm. and the temporary became constant uh, and people are very mm -hmm. tired, they're very depressed, they're very, very, uh, they're, they're, they're feeling inside as, uh, um, they feel that they're, uh, left, you know, yes, left alone yes. with their problems. So yes. we need to talk honestly with these people, you know, we need to work family from family to family trying to find solutions, you know, trying to find a place for them to live, mm -hmm. uh, trying to find a place for their children to go to a kindergarten, you know, trying to find a job and help with the job to people who want yeah, all, and can All the sorts of things. Sorts of, we, there's we, a we lot of need, international yes. help and a lot of injury and people who want to work, but without clear plan, without clear vision, you know, all this help, it goes like it's very fragmented, mm -hmm. you know, somebody helps to someone, but there is no well, clear... That's the coordination which you would bring yeah, no taking... coordination and also no mm. probably we need to, like to ask for international support you know to, yeah, uh, to make much bigger resources to, to have a clear plan to ask but if for we take a step back I mean there are some people and I have to bring in the international dimension again because it is something we're focused on some people are saying you know you being considered or brought in is another provocation to Putin with this they said the same thing about Saakashvili no, how would you so. respond to I, that I don't know I don't know uh, I, can, I cannot judge why this impression but I uh, uh, by the days I was there, you know, Saakashvili is just talking corruption, 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 Odessa, 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 corruption, 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 and I, I never hear about Putin from him. I, uh, people say that, you know, there is this mental thing uh, with Saakashvili, Putin, but in, in the work, in the team, we don't talk about that. It's like a lot of, uh, a lot of things discussed, uh, you know, But how was the plans. proposal made, actually? How was the proposal made, and why did you decide to take it, after all? I decided to take because I wanted to, to do the right thing, you know, I wanted to be in line with my values and I wanted to do something that uh, could matter and something that could, uh, uh, well, from my personal, also from my personal perspective, to, to, to fix the wrong that was done. Uh, to, to Ukrainian people, that's one thing. And also I'm a uh, technocrat, I'm an expert, you know, I know that I can be effecti effective working in, uh, uh, with these issues, addressing these issues, and I want to work in an effective team that uh, is, really, uh, is really determined to fight corruption, to bring mm -hmm. change, to move to Europe, to, uh, to bring European values. And uh, uh, for me, that's, uh, that's like a fresh air, you know, like a big, mm -hmm. uh, a big chance, because when you're trapped in this mentality, when you're trapped in this, uh, 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 absence of hope, you know, mm. uh, it's, it's, it's just a way also to, to break, you know, to break this uh, What's to break through and make it possible? But I mean, that's my question. What is Ukraine to you? Because it sounds like a big part of Ukraine is showing that certain things are possible to make that then possible in Russia. Is that correct? I, yes. And also and I started not only to my, Russia. I also I started my political career after the first Maidan. Mm -hmm. it had a, uh, and it had a great impression on me. Uh, first of all, because I understood what is the regime about after that, so, you know, because uh, after that the propaganda started and everything started, you know, it was in Russia. Mm -hmm. And also I was Razum Nas uh, uh, it was a great, uh, great mm. impression. So it was all, all, always uh, Ukraine for many Russians, you know, it was always some, we were sorry when things went wrong here, you know, we were like very sorry when we saw Yanukovych and everything that was going on because we were also always watching Ukraine and hoping Ukraine to succeed because we hope that if Ukraine can succeed, we can also succeed. You but know, there's probably something change. different in, on, on your agenda, and um, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, in what you do in Ukraine and what you wanted to do in Russia. In, to what extent is it different? I, I want Russia to be a democratic country. It's, it's, uh, 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 you know, we, uh, at, this, at this point, you know, first of all, the war should be stopped, the first thing in Russia. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, second thing, uh, democracy should come. You know, without democracy, with so this the regime, elections, elections uh, m uh, free media, because this propaganda is really killing. It's killing outside the country, it's killing inside the country. The story of Boris Nemtsov is uh, it's also a very personal uh, and tragic thing for me. And, you know, Boris Nemtsov, he worked. Uh, uh, here, he worked here, you know, and there are uh, people who uh, it, it, now in some state commission that say that they they cannot uh, uh, do a memorial for him in Russia, you know, there's a street under the name of Boris Nemtsov here, but they cannot do a memorial for Boris Nemtsov because uh, they say he did nothing, when they say very stupid things, like, you know, if, uh, and if somebody wants to get uh, famous and get a memorial, probably he can, you know, provoke somebody to, to kill him. And stupid things, you know, and they criticize him and they say he's there. Whatever. Mm. So it, it's also something very, uh, mm. it's very traumatic for me and important for me. Marie, another question, which is probably asked any Russian would be asked in in, in Ukraine mm. about Crimea, mm. which is uh, mm -hmm. Crimea is Russian or Ukrainian? In your Ukrainian. Uh, Crimea is definitely Ukrainian uh, at this moment. Uh, uh, we, but we have to understand, you know, we have to uh, we have to understand the factual situation on the ground. You know, the factual situation on the ground. Uh, is uh, is how it is. You know, you're, it's not under Ukrainian control at this moment. You know, it's under the control of Russia, and uh, there are people there. They're also all, also brainwashed by the propaganda. You know, they're also they're, they had a referendum. You know, some some people. Uh, you know, referendum under the guns. You know, some people had to flee. But I, I don't. I don't. Um, I understand. For me, it's absolutely clear. You know, Crimea was annexed. Crimea was part of Ukraine. We signed this agreement. You know, and what happened was both illegal and immoral. Uh, how to fix it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a very difficult. Uh, I mean, technically, I don't know how to fix it and when it's going to be fixed. But uh, certainly, Ukraine, uh, Crimea should be returned to. Uh, Something that should be done. Yeah. And to turn in a slightly different direction, I mean. Um when we talk about Ukraine, sometimes looking at Ukraine is reminiscent of Russia of the 90s with economic mm -hmm. instability, with you know a certain dependency on international organizations for loans and financing. You know, with your father having been a key prime minister in the 90s, what what are are there lessons or things he spoke about that you take with you? He, you he see wrote a wonderful applicable? book, uh, post uh, uh, post imperial syndrome. And he, he wrote a book that is very, very dangerous for a country, for all the empires that were, uh, that um, uh, broke, uh, broke apart empires with colonies or empires with uh, that territorially integrated. And he talked about this, that this is the mm -hmm. very, very uh, a big, big uh, danger. Like what happened in Serbia, you know, mm -hmm. and what's uh, going on in Russia is just the worst scenario that he pictured and he explained it and he explained it on historical level with historical examples. He explained it on, uh, with the factual data of economics, uh, and uh, he uh, uh, he foresaw it. You know, he foresaw this as a risk, and unfortunately, this actually this risk, this awful scenario, is playing out now. And uh, I mean, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you, Maria, for joining us.